everybody, Claire here from Van Nuys Labradoodles, and I'm here today with the Razzle Dazzle litter of mini multi-gen Australian Labradoodle puppies, and this is their week one update. So today we're going to talk a little bit about what's happened with them in this past week. We'll give you their new weights and weight gains, and we'll talk a little bit about how Ripple is doing. And we'll also go through some uh, suggested reading material for you and a little bit on our approach at Van Nuys Labradoodles. So the Razzle Dazzle puppies are a week old today. And in the first week, there's not a lot of things that the puppies actually do individually as they are, are all still deaf. Their ears are sealed shut still for probably another two weeks. Their eyes are still closed, although maybe by our two-week update next Monday, we will see some eyes that have opened up, and they still aren't able to eliminate on their own. So their lives pretty much consist of eating and sleeping. They do make some cute little sounds, and they have all started to get up on their legs a little bit. Uh, some of them are actually really mobile with moving themselves across the whelping box. And you'll notice that today's box looks a little different. It's the smaller box. We have our whelping box in two sizes. And when Ripple delivered her puppies, we had her in the larger area, mostly so that I can move around a bit. Uh, this box is much smaller and it's much easier for the puppies to stay close to mom, find Ripple and find one another. So they don't get separated and all upset about being away from the litter as much. And you'll see Ripple's not in the box at the moment. She's just out of sight of the camera. She's sitting actually right beside Reynolds. She was in here with me and the puppies were nursing and uh, she's decided she needs a little bit of a puppy break. So she's sitting over there watching the action. I expect she'll probably join us when I start moving them around though. So these little Labradoodles are doing really well. And you'll see they all have their collars on now. So we know who's who. Now with this litter, because they are all very distinct in their markings, it's easy to keep them separate. But we still put the collars on so that at a very quick glance we can see who's who in the Razzle Dazzle litter. And Reynolds weighed them just before we started filming this video. And we have an order as to who is the biggest and the smallest. So it goes pink, red, blue, and purple. So the girls are the biggest and the boys are not quite as big. And compared to their birth uh, weights, pink was the biggest at birth, followed by blue, then purple, then red. So red obviously is a very proficient at uh, getting a good spot at the milk bar. So let's take each of the puppies individually and we'll talk a little bit about them and what their, their weights are. So we'll start with the biggest one in the litter, and that is this little girl here, Pink Collar Girl. So Pink Collar Girl, she is very, very adept at getting into the milk bar. She knows how to find Ripple without any trouble, and she's quite good at nursing, obviously. So she now weighs 631 grams, which is amazing. She's gained 343 grams in just a week. So she has more than doubled her birth weight. Now pink is one of the ones that has the tan markings on the side of her face and on her eyebrows. So this is one of the little dogs that we expect is a tricolored Labradoodle. But as I was mentioning before, we just have to wait and see because Sable is a tricky color and one that changes so it may end up that she's actually a sable and not a try. But we'll, we'll find that out in the next few weeks. So this is a really sweet little puppy. Very gentle, very kind, and very relaxed, and obviously a great eater. So that's Pink Collar Girl. And the next one that we have here who is number two in terms of their weight is Miss Red Collar Girl. Now, as I was just saying, Miss Red Collar Girl was third in terms of weight last week when she was born and here she is now at number two and she's only two grams behind pink. She weighs a whopping 629 grams so she gained 411 grams in seven days. Uh, 
her birth weight was 218 grams, so that's an enormous gain. She clearly is well able to find the very best spot at the milk bar. Uh, she's a happy little girl. She seldom you hear a word out of her. She's often upside down, uh, probably because her stomach's so full she can't lie on it, I suspect, now that we've weighed her again. Uh, but she is often in that classic labradoodle pose upside down. And she has these beautiful black and white party markings. And she doesn't have any of the phantom markings. So she is perhaps carrying phantom. Uh, so if she were to be a breeding girl, we might have puppies who were phantom with the right male. But she herself does not have any phantom. And I think, if I'm right... No, it's not her. There's one of them that has one little black toe that I wanted to show you. And I thought it was red, but it's not red. It must be one of the boys. So that's our beautiful little red collar girl. So following her is Mr. Blue Collar. Hey, little fella. Now, Mr. Blue Collar, at birth, he weighed 265 grams. And now he is weighing 559 grams. So he's gained 294 grams, which is really good. And this boy, this little blue collar dog, he has the strongest markings that are the phantom. So that's those tan markings across the side of his face, on his eyebrows, and inside his little ears. He also has those markings underneath his tail. As you can see, they're right underneath on his bum. So he has that little marking on his bum. And I'm just looking to see if he's the one with the one black toe. Nope, he's not either. So Mr. Blue is right in the middle of the pack. He does very nicely. Uh, I don't think that I've ever really heard him complain about anything. And he's doing a great job at the milk bar. And he is a really handsome boy with those beautiful markings on him. And you can see he's relaxed, calm, and happy puppy. So that's Mr. Blue. And then certainly not least, but last in terms of the weight gain, is Mr. Purple Collar. Hey, Purpy. Hey, buddy. Come here, honey. And as usual, I'm talking to them even though they can't hear me. Uh, I do that because I talk to them as a matter of course. And also, as I've said before, because when we have them scenting and they're up to our neck, then they can hear my, or they can't hear, they can feel the vibrations in my chest. Mr. Purple Collar is the talker out of the group right now. He often has something to tell me. If he is away from mom or his litter mates, he is the first one to let us know. So Purple at birth weighed 256 grams. It's a good boy. And now he weighs 538 grams. So he has gained 282 grams. So as a breeder, what we like to see in our puppies is that they double their birth weight in the first week everyone's done that so mr purple collar <clears throat> excuse me he also has that nice little bit of tan marking on the side of his face it's not quite as pronounced as it is in blue collar boy and he has the tan on his eyebrows and we'll just have to wait and see again if he's going to sable or if he is actually a tri tricolor puppy he's a nice boy now, with respect to them being sables or tricolors, and I say we just have to wait and see, uh, the way that we're going to tell definitively is that we will DNA test them. Uh, and that just involves a simple swab in their cheeks, and then we send it off to the lab. And the lab we use is in Spokane, uh, so it takes a little while to get the results back. And we don't do that until they are mm, almost four weeks old. You have to have them kept separate for an hour before you can do the DNA testing. Because when they're nursing or if they're eating out of the pan, which they will be doing at four weeks, they can get contamination from the other dogs. And by contamination, I mean the other dog's DNA. So we want to make sure that they have an hour, we rinse their mouths out, we keep them entirely separate, and then we do the swabbing. So we don't like to do that when they're too young because it's way too stressful for them. Uh, right now, these guys can't be on their own for an entire hour. It would be way too much for them. We are doing still some of our early neurological stimulation with them, which as I've shown you before, is just really simple things that causes them little tiny bits of discomfort in the day. So right now, it's just five seconds less going up and going down 
And the other thing that I do with them regularly is I have them upside down in my arms. I like them to get used to being upside down, be comfortable with that. It is a Labradoodle uh, trait that they go upside down. And you can see that Miss Pink Collar is quite accustomed to doing that. She's very relaxed in my arms and likes having her tummy rubbed. And you can see over there, Blue Collar is using Red Collar as his pillow. And Red is halfway upside down, turned on her side, probably to accommodate this rather generous stomach. You may hear some barking in the background today. That's Oshana. Uh, she is just right outside the maternity ward right here. And Oshana is very protective because her puppies are nearby. So if she hears anything, she's going to give us a little bit of an alarm and, and tell us that she thinks that we should be paying attention. All is well. There's nobody there. So this is the sort of thing that we do during the day with the puppies so that they become totally accustomed to being held and to being touched by people and knowing that that's a good thing. So you can see Pink is quite enjoying that sort of process. So for to, today, what I'd like to talk to you a bit about is partly this. This is what I talk about when I say we bond with our dogs. We make sure we establish a good, strong relationship with them. And we do that by earning their trust and earning their respect. And you can see Pink's having quite the little movement with her paws there. Uh, just to digress from what I'm going to talk about, when you see puppies doing this, a lot of people think they're dreaming. But what's really happening is this is nature's way of making sure they develop their muscles even when they're sleeping. Because all they do is sleep and eat, there has to be for a way for them to develop their musculature. And that is how they do it, is that they twitch and they look like they're running and moving around when they're sleeping. But really what that's all about is getting their muscles built up. So back to the bond-based thing. Uh, this holding them and nurturing them and having a close contact with them physically is part of the beginning of our bond-based approach with all of our dogs. Uh, we, we never say we own our dogs, if anything, they own us. We consider the dogs to be members of our family and to be equals. And we look for the cues they give us. We let them tell us many, many things and we respond to those. Uh, so it's a little bit of a different approach than, say, 25 years ago. Uh, and that spills over into training. And the, the books that I'm going to suggest for everyone to get started on reading and following are from authors that, over the years, we found mirror our approach to dogs. Some of them are newer publications and newer books as times change, because certainly the approach to dogs and how we feel about our dogs has changed quite dramatically in, in the last even just 10 years. So the first thing I'm going to suggest is that you read everything you can get your hands on that's been written by Dr. Sophia Yin. Dr. Yin was a wonderful, amazing veterinarian who was a very kind person and had probably one of the first um, outbreaks in new approaches to teaching your dog how to learn things. Uh, the, the book that I would recommend that you really focus on is Perfect Puppy in Seven Days. It's really easy to read. There's lots of diagrams and it's one that you can easily share with your children or your grandchildren and it has really good practical, easy to follow steps. It's a really excellent book. Sophia Yim probably mirrors our approach more than any other author on the market today. The other author that we really support and like to follow is Dr. Ian Dunbar. Uh, Ian Dunbar is also a vet. He's a little older than um, Dr. Yin, but, uh, and, and has a little bit more of a traditional approach for some things, but his approach is very down to earth. Matter of fact, he has lots of great advice for introducing your dog with new dogs, introducing your dog to your children, and such things as that. Uh, so I really recommend reading his books. Uh, he has one book that's called Before and After Getting Your Puppy, which we highly recommend. And we'll put links to all of these books in uh, below the video here so you can follow those and, and purchase the products if you wish or read them online. Uh, I would show you a copy of the books as I have them all, but I have an e-reader, so all of mine are electronic, so not much to show up. And the, uh, another book, uh, which is written by Jane Arnold, and it's called um, Love is All You Need, A Bomb-Based Approach to Learning. 
it's fine. It's not my favorite book at all. Um, it's, it's written a little bit like a Danielle Steele novel. There's a lot of repetition. Um, while there are many concepts that I really enjoyed in the book, I found it really annoying to read and it took me a long time to finish. So that's not one that I strongly recommend, but it does give you some good insight into what a bomb-based approach is with your dog. But the one that I really like, which is not a training guide, it's not going to say, take your treat, put your dog in this position, do this, and your dog will learn how to sit. It's more of a exploration of relationships with dogs. What our dogs are trying to communicate to us, how they view us, and how what we do, they see, how they interpret our behavior. Uh, so, and that book is written by Suzanne Clothier, and it's called Bones Would Rain From The Sky. I really recommend everybody get the book. It's not necessary to read it right before you get your puppy, because like I said, it's not practical, like do this, do that, set up this way, you know, tell your kids that. It's more of an exploration of our relationships with dogs. I think you'll find it really worthwhile. Um, it may change your thoughts about a lot of things, and it really helps you understand when your dog's doing something and you're kind of, I don't get it. Why is he, she doing that? What What's happening over there? Why is, when I do this, why does my dog do that? So it's really good for that. It's Each chapter is about a different dog um, and a different situation she's had with the dog. She is a trainer, but she certainly doesn't train like any trainer that probably you've run across, certainly none that I've run across previously. Uh, so I really, really enjoyed that book and I, I really recommend it. Now on the other um, end of the scale, there's a couple of things I would say are not appropriate, especially when you're working with a Labradoodle. Um, you'll know from your research that Labradoodles are known for being very soft dogs. They're gentle, they're kind, they're friendly, uh, they're enthusiastic about life and they, they approach you readily. They approach other people and other dogs with their tails wagging and a smile on their face. And this is partly why they're so popular, of course. Um, but that soft nature that they have definitely does not respond well to any heavy-handed or negative approach. So if your dog's doing something, your Labradoodle, I mean not your dog, but your Labradoodle's doing something and you don't want them to do it, yeah, you can always go, hey, no, and you can do that. But anything more than that is definitely too much for a Labradoodle. They quickly become very confused, upset, their feelings get hurt, and, and they'll be shying away from you and afraid to carry on and, and just live life as they would normally. It's much m more uh, beneficial and you'll get much better results if you go, hey, hey, no, 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 that's not good, no. And then you show them what you do want them to do in a really positive manner. Now, I'm not saying you're always going to do that. I'm sure everyone has met a couple who has a child that is never told no, and we all know those children are not pleasant to be around. And dogs who are never told no are also not pleasant to be around. So yes, the finger and the, the look and the no is very important, but it should be used really sparingly with uh, Labradoodles. So if you've previously watched The Dog Whisperer um, and been familiar with Cesar Milan, for instance, his approach is not one that's successful with Labradoodles. The dogs he works with are generally red zone dogs, um, and red zone dogs are certain breeds that generally have been bred for fighting, and the dogs in particular that Cesar generally works with are dogs who have been in very difficult and unfortunate circumstances. Those dogs require an entirely different approach than a Labradoodle does. Um, and Mr. Milan's approach is also a bit antiquated now. Uh, he strives to teach people to be the leader of the pack, to be the alpha figure in your dog's life. Uh, your dog doesn't go out of the door before you do, the, your dog doesn't eat before you do, and things like this. Um, th that approach is really not appropriate, I don't think, for any type of dog, unless you have one in a very special circumstance such as he deals with. But for your average dog, that's, that's not appropriate or necessary. And that's not how you establish a relationship with the dog. The dog doesn't learn to respect you. The dog learns to fear you. The dog is only doing what you want the dog to do because it knows the consequences are serious. That's not what you want. 
You want your dog to live their life and be happy and having a great time, love you and respect you, not fear you. So we don't recommend anything uh, by Mr. Milan. And the other book that we used to really recommend highly way back in the uh, very early 80s, I first bred my first litter in 1981. And this book was my Bible back then, whereas now I've uh, moved uh, moved along and have a different approach. And that's um, the book by the Monks of New Skeet. They have several books and they're all, they're all very similar. And the Monks of New Skeet breed German Shepherds. And they're amazing and and they have many many excellent points in their books and indeed part of our assessment process is from the monks of new ski um, i only use a small portion of it but i do use some of their philosophies but they haven't really kept up and they haven't moved ahead they haven't evolved at all so they're still very much focused on being the alpha and um, being the leader and having that position of authority and not so much the let's treat our dogs as a member of the family and, and more like we would with our children. So it's sort of like if you look at a child rearing book from maybe the 1950s, uh, you know, we were told to, not to spoil our children. It was okay to spank our kids. Uh, now we don't do any of those things as we've, we've grown and evolved a bit. So the Mux and New Skeet are sort of in that older style of how to bring up puppies um, and haven't really moved ahead. So we don't follow their approach quite so much anymore. And they're also not really that appropriate for Labradoodles. Um, Labradoodles didn't even exist when the Monks of New Skeet first wrote their books, uh, as they are still a, a really new breed. And they are a much softer and gentler and kinder, kinder breed of dog. So everything that we do here in the, with our own dogs who live with us um, and that all of our guardians who are so amazing do with their dogs as well, it's more focused on this bond-based approach and this, this symbiotic relationship where we, we give and take and we, we love our puppies and uh, we love them as they are members of our, our families. And that's really where we find that everyone will get the, the most success. So I'll give you the links to the three books there that I've recommended. Uh, Jennifer Arnold's one, The Love Is All You Need, um, that's the title of it. I won't bother putting that link in because I really don't think you'll find it particularly useful. If you want it, you can always just ask me in the comments and I'll be happy to give it to you. Um, but I definitely would recommend The Bones Would Rain From The Sky. When you have a bit more time and your puppy is well on their way to becoming a dog so that you understand them a little bit more when they're adults. Because understanding your dog as an adult is just as important as understanding your, your dog as a puppy. So now let's get Ripple to come in to see if I can talk her into coming in and, and making an appearance. Ripple, come here, sweet Give me a Ripple. Come on. That's my girl. There we go. Good girl. So Ripple's doing great. You can see that she's in really good shape. She hasn't lost an ounce from having her babies. And the thing that really makes me so happy and so proud is she is totally at ease being away and letting me in here in the box with her babies. There's absolutely no concern. She's not in the least bit agitated. In fact, she's probably thinking, yay, I get a bit of a break. She does get lots of breaks. She's already going outside and running around out the back. She's digging and she's playing with her ball and she's running around and leaping like her usual crazy little ripple self. Nice to baby. Yes, you are. Yes. So she's got lots of energy. She's in really, really good condition. So I'm really happy about that. And the best way to tell that she's in good shape is because her babies have gained so much weight. So she's eating really, really well. She's up to about, oh, about three and a half pounds a day right now. And uh, she has lots of treats. She gets a couple of bones. So her favorite bone is the lamb neck bones or the beef neck bones, and those have lots of meat on them, and, and for her normally would be an entire meal. So we're still supplementing her with the um, calcium, and we'll continue to do that for the entire time that she is nursing the babies. But that's the only thing that she gets. Um, well, she does get her love bugs, her pre and probiotics that all our dogs get, uh, and her um, phytoplankton as well. We'll discuss those things more when we do the episode on, on feeding. But uh, generally speaking, she's just getting her nice raw food. Her coat's shiny. It's in beautiful shape. She's not losing any hair. She's just doing great. 
and you can see she's she's pretty relaxed about the whole process she's quite enjoying being a mom but she also really enjoys to still be a member of the family as as much as she always is so that's your update for this week i really hope you enjoyed it i hope that you will get the books and read up and i'm sure you'll enjoy them and find them really informative and and helpful in preparation for your little razzle dazzle labradoodle puppy coming home uh, next week we will give you some more information on the puppies of course and we may see some of their beautiful eyes making an appearance and uh, we'll give you a bit more information on uh, getting ready particularly getting the house ready and some of the supplies to start looking for so if you enjoyed this uh, video please give us a thumbs up please don't hesitate to leave some comments or questions below I'm happy to answer them and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so that uh, you get all of our updates uh, just as soon as they come out. So you will be getting two videos a week right now because we have the Razzle Dazzle litter and we have the Cafe Noir litter. And Hazel came today and Hazel is Ripple's sister, Ripple's little sister. And she is due in the next week. So then we'll be at three videos a week because we'll be doing Hazel's Litter as well. And Hazel's Litter is the Cinnamon Squirrel Litter with Trip as the Daddy. So we're really excited to see what we get with that litter. I suspect they'll be all in various shades of brown, from light brown to maybe dark brown. Lots probably in Ripple's color. Uh, Hazel is a, is a chocolate and uh, Trip is a chocolate tricolor. So it'll be really exciting to see those puppies. So those puppies should arrive before we do our next update for the Razzle Dazzle litter. So make sure you stay tuned and uh, another good reason to subscribe to the channel if you wish. Thanks so much for watching.